Hello and welcome back to Ebenezer. We have a great show in store for you. Coming up, we have a story about Jesus calling his first disciples. And we have a craft where we make our very own fishing game. But for now, it's time for a song. And it's called God's Kingdom is Here by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. <laughs> Great song. Now we're going to hear from our Bible story all about Jesus calling his first disciples. Let's see it happen. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. At the edge of the water, he saw two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to go out into the water a little bit away from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. 
When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Go out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Lots and lots of fish. So they called for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled up their boats uh, and put them on the shore, left everything and followed him. Now that we've had the story, we're going to investigate what it means. To do this, we're going to need the help of our feathered friend, Zelda. Let's dive into the passage. Why does Simon get called Simon Peter? Well, in John's Gospel, we get the full story that Jesus decides to call Simon Peter because Peter means rock. And throughout the Bible, we see Peter as a bit of a brash character who always thinks with his uh, feet rather than his head. But as we go through his life in the Bible, we see that Peter becomes a more stable and reliable person who lives up to his rock nickname. And he becomes one of the disciples who spreads the message about Jesus really well to lots of people. Why does Simon agree to put the nets out into the water when it hadn't worked all night? That's a great question, Zelda. It doesn't make sense, does it? Imagine if you'd been fishing all night long and you hadn't caught any fish. And then some person walks up to you and says to do it again, what you've spent all night doing with no success. But Peter trusts Jesus. So even though he's spent all night fishing and hasn't caught any fish, he trusts what Jesus is saying and he decides to fish. And he's rewarded with that trust with lots and lots of fish. Why does Simon say... Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Well, Simon has just seen Jesus use his power to make lots and lots of fish. And Simon would have realised at this point that this wasn't just any person. This was the Son of God, the Messiah. And Simon would have realised that next to the Son of God, he's so sinful. He's done so many things wrong. And he would have thought, how can I, having done as much wrong as I have, Stay close to Jesus, this perfect person. But thankfully, Jesus draws near to us all, even though we're sinful. What does Jesus mean when he says, now you will fish for people? Well, Jesus is saying they'll no longer be fishermen of fish. They won't be throwing out nets to catch fish. Instead, they'll be going out and telling people about Jesus to catch them or bring them to Jesus so that they can follow him. How can we follow Jesus like Simon? Well, it's amazing how readily Simon follows Jesus, and it's why he ends up being such a rock of the church. But we can follow Jesus like that too, and we can do it by following how he tells us to live and how he tells us to act, and we can learn about that best by reading the Bible and seeing what he says. But we can also pray to him. We can pray that he'll guide us and how to live like him. What are we going to learn about next time? Next time, we'll be hearing about how Jesus heals a man with leprosy. How will the man respond? Let's see tomorrow. Now it's time for the memory verse. Today's memory verse is from Luke chapter 5, verse 10. And it's Jesus saying this. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So let's say that again. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Now it's time for the craft. Today... We're making a fishing game. For today's craft, you will need some cardboard. Thicker is better, but any cardboard will do. I'm using some from an Amazon box. Some plain paper. Some lolly sticks. A glue stick. Some scissors. Remember, scissors can be sharp, so always be careful and ask for an adult for help if you need some tape, some string, a hole punch, a marker pen, 
and finally some colouring pencils. But you can use coloured pens or crayons if you prefer. Now let's get cracking with the craft. We're going to be making our very own fishing game. So to start with we need to make our fish. Take your cardboard and use your marker pen to draw a few different fish shapes. I'm drawing five, but you can draw more if you like. Try to make your fish different sizes, like I've done here. Now use your scissors to cut out your fish shapes. Remember to be careful when using scissors and ask an adult for help if you need to. Now take your cut out cardboard fish shapes and use your glue stick to glue them to your plain paper. Keep them spaced a little apart from each other. Once they're all glued down, take your scissors and cut them out again. You should be left with cardboard fish, shapes that are white on one side. Perfect for decorating. Use your marker pen to draw on scales and an eye onto each of your fishes. I've done normal scales on mine, but you can draw any kind of patterns you like. Now it's time to colour them in however you like. I'm using colouring pencils, but you can decorate yours however you like. Once you're done decorating your fish, it's time to get them ready for our game. Take some more cardboard and draw some of these long hook shapes, just like I've done. One for each fish. You can make them different sizes. Bigger hooks will be easier and smaller ones will be more challenging. When you've drawn your hook shapes, cut them out. And make sure to cut along the line we drew on the straight part of the hook. Now, time to attach the hooks to the fish. For each fish, take a hook and bend the two sides outwards so that it stands up like this. Then, take some tape and stick down the two flat parts so that your hook sticks straight upwards, just like I've done here. Do this with all of your fish and hooks. Now it's time to make our fishing rods. I'm only going to make one, but you should make as many fishing rods as the amount of players you want for your game. To make your rod, take a lolly stick and use your hole punch to make a hole at one end. Then take a piece of string about 15 centimeters long and tie it through the hole you've made. Next, take some card and draw another fish hook with a wider part at the end. Cut out your fish hook and use your hole punch to make a hole in the part at the end. Then tie the other end of your string through this hole. Almost done. We just need to add some finishing touches to our fishing rod. Use your marker pen to draw on some details to make it look even more like a proper fishing rod. And now we've finished making our game. To play, use your fishing rod to hook up the fish you've made. If you make multiple rods, you can challenge your friends to see who can hook up the most fish the fastest. Well, what a great craft. Do send through any of your pictures or questions to the email in the description below. But for now, it's time for another song, and it's called The King Has Arrived by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. Someone who pay the price of sin for me and you. God promised a servant king who would bring peace to a broken human race. God said he'd be the one to whom he'd lava sleep or have his grace. He's here. Zechariah sang a song I praise you Lord for you've kept your promises And you have sent the one Who'll save us from the hands of our enemies Now we can serve you God For you 
have shown your mercy and your grace. You've chosen my son John to prepare the way for the coming of the King. He's here. Son, the King of the world, so I will praise the one who keeps his promises to Israel. For you've been merciful, just as you said to our families long ago. He's here. One, two, three. The King has arrived. Go and tell everyone. Promises through him will be fulfilled. He's alive. He'll win the victory and save the world. He's alive. The King of the universe. The King of the universe. The King of the universe is here. running out of time now so we're going to end in a short prayer if you'd like to make it yours please join in with the amen at the end lord thank you that you come to all people help us to follow you and trust you well and to go out and tell more people about you amen amen well that's all we've got time for do tune in next time as we hear about jesus healing a man with leprosy but for now that's bye from me and it's bye from Zelda, and we'll see you in the next video.